let's talk about the good old heat versus ice debate. So when it really comes to heat or ice, neither are really capable of actually changing the temperature of the muscle. So if you lie a hot pack or a cold pack on your back, it will definitely change the temperature of your skin, but the thermal effects aren't powerful enough to really get down deep into the muscle, the tendons, the ligaments, the bones, all of the structures that are lying underneath the skin. So just know that you're not able to actually change the temperature or actually warm up or cool down the tissue. Ice is really good at numbing the skin. And this is how it's really good for pain control because if you have pain on an area, you can numb the skin on top of it and this will help reduce the pain underneath. Heat, on the other hand, is really good for relaxing and soothing muscle spasms. And this is particularly important for cases of back pain that usually result in a lot of muscle spasm in that area. Not only does it relax the muscle spasms, it's really good at relaxing you in general because it just feels really good. If you're in pain, you tweak your back, you have muscle spasms, putting a hot pack on your low back just feels good overall. And that can help to globally desensitize your entire system. The brain perceives heat as a very friendly and comforting stimulus, so it can help calm everything down. Now you may want to avoid heat if your back injury is truly a traumatic injury. Now I'm talking something where there's a true muscle strain, like something severe, like a whiplash injury, lifting something extremely heavy, because in these circumstances, there will be an inflammatory component, so inflammation, and it is best to avoid heat in the very early stages in situations where there is inflammation. If there's also any kind of swelling or open wounds, you also wanna avoid heat. But Traumatic injuries for back pain are actually very rare. Most of the time, back pain is not a traumatic injury. It is done by just moving a certain way or comes out of nowhere. So in most cases, heat's gonna be fine because it's not a traumatic injury. But the bottom line really comes down to this. Whatever feels best to you is what you should choose. If you have good experience with pain relief, with ice in the past, then you wanna use ice. If you have good experiences with heat in the past, then you're gonna to wanna to use heat because the research really shows they both have roughly equal mild pain reducing effects. If you've never used heat or ice ever and you're wondering what to use, I would personally recommend heat because if you don't have prior experience or a prior good experience with using ice for low back pain, Sometimes the brain can perceive ice as a bad or noxious stimulus, and it may make your back pain worse. Think about it. If you're like in a state of increased tone and everything's all spasmed up, adding like a very cold stimulus to the low back may not be perceived as well. So if you've never done either and you're wondering which one to choose, as long as it wasn't a traumatic injury, as long as you don't have any kind of opened wounds, I would recommend heat. But just as with all of these other things we have mentioned, it's not a permanent solution. Heat or ice may help take the edge off in the beginning to help calm down the pain and make it more tolerable in those first three days, but it's important to wean off. And another important factor is heat and ice should never be a barrier to movement. As mentioned in module two, whenever you tweak your back or hurt your back, it's important to get moving and to find tolerable movement patterns. And if you're constantly resting using a heat pack or an ice pack, this may be a barrier to movement. So big picture, use whatever feels best. Know that it's good to just temporarily calm pain down in the beginning, but it is not a permanent solution.